We're approaching the end of May 2023. I've been asked by quite a few people to do an update on my mango plantings. About 10 months ago, I planted a whole bunch of different polyembryonic seedlings in ground. I did not amend the soil like I would typically do for a planting. It was experimental. Planted them in clay soil with tilled in volcanic rock, specifically lava rock. So we'll take a look in and see how they're doing. I'll be showing you also some of my older established grafted mangoes as well. Now, I did not cover these at all during winter. We didn't have a really bad cold winter, but we did have a really long one. So we had a lot of nights in the 30s and that did defoliate quite a few of them. And so some of the seedlings did die. So I'll mention replacements as I go and look about some adjustments I have also made. So starting out here, this is a Glen mango. This particular plant is grafted. It's been in the ground for about two years, really has not done a whole lot. Did flower, pulled the flowers off because clearly it's a small stature at this point. This spring it has put on some new foliage, some new branches, so that's good to see. Hopefully it grows a bit more. I am trying to provide a little bit more nitrogen to these plants to get them to grow a bit. This is one of the seedlings. This is CAC. So not a whole lot to report on this one. You know, it's definitely gotten a little bigger since I first planted it, but not a whole lot. So we'll see if that changes. I'm told sometimes it takes over a year for a mango plant to get used to the clay soil and start to actively grow in it. It's not uncommon for them to be stunted and not do much. They're about a month old seedlings when they were planted. So not real mature. Here we have another seedling, coconut cream. Again, hasn't died back, but hasn't put on tremendous growth either. Here we see my Nam Doc Mai Mango. This was planted as three gallon in 2019. So this is four years in the ground. This did not flower at all this year. And you can see it's now putting on a lot of growth. I'm liking all the new branching that I'm seeing on this. Uh, that's the one thing, if you let your mango fruit, pretty much all its energy is going to go towards fruit, at least in our climate it's not going to have any energy left over to grow. So you got to pick one or the other. That's why typically people will cut the fruit off or pinch the fruit off the first few years in the ground and not let them fruit until that fourth year. Over here is my orange sherbet, another poly seedling. Hasn't done a whole lot. This did get some leaf burn during winter. And it looks like it's about to shoot some growth, but not showing, showing me much. This Malika is grafted. It's been in the ground for two years now. I have a tomato cage around it just to help support it. Uh, some of these grafted varieties are very spindly. You can see this one's growing kind of in a weird manner, and it's real thin. So it needs some garden tape just to support it. It too is putting on new growth there, new top growth. You can see another branch down low it's putting on. So it's, it's growing, but at a very slow rate. The oak ring did not make it. That was a grafted plant. It's one I had in the ground for two years. It lost all its leaves and the roots blackened and died. So that one is gone. I have four more plants to show you. The one in front is brand new. This is a pina colada mango. I rooted it in a container and transplanted it just this last week into its current location. This lemon meringue is also a new planting. This was one that was also about a month old that I was container growing. I lost the lemon meringue that I had in ground here, died from winter, 
So this one is going in its stead. And this had the benefit of growing in a container for those nine months. And you can see how much bigger it is as compared to the others. So in springtime, I cut the stem right there and you can see all the new growth from that. I didn't want this to be too lanky. So it'd be even taller if I had just left it alone, but I like these to have a strong trunk. So I did top that one. So that's the lemon ring. You can see the Nilla mango over there. Uh, that was actually just right there. So I just moved that one over. Finally, we have a Namdok Mai. This one actually was one of the original seedlings that was planted here. I just moved it to this new location. It was over there. So these four plants that I just showed you, those are the ones that I just replanted recently, whether they were brand new, like the two there, the pina colada and the lemon meringue, or transplants like the manila and the Namdok Mai. So the difference being on all of these is that they are planted above grade. I went with the mound style. So what they're, they're planted in is a media that comprises a one to one to one ratio of peat, moss, decomposed granite, and perlite. The same media that I use for my container plantings. So essentially plopped each of these four plants on the ground and wrapped edging around each of them. Um, these are about five inches to six inches tall and took my soil media and dumped that into each of these to cover cover up the sides to bring it up to the top of the root ball. Really the edging more or less just reinforces the mound so that it doesn't collapse around the plant. The reason I'm doing this is because I came across another YouTube channel here in the valley, Naveed, I'm gonna link his channel and He's as obsessed with mangoes as I am with figs. So he has many, many mango plants in his backyard. And he too has discovered that planting them directly in the clay soil here does not really work out for the plants. They just stagnate and eventually die. So his methodology is to create raised planter beds with an open bottom, fill that with good media, media that's gonna drain well he puts a lot of sand into his mixture so that that mango plant's root ball lives in ideal soil. Still has the ability to plunge down into the clay, the taproot that is, once it's strong enough over the course of a few years. He has some sizable mangoes and really looks to be successful with that method. Rather than building the soil in the ground, he builds the soil up around the plant. So at this point, Things are still very experimental, can't really say one way or another what works or doesn't, except to say that our clay soil definitely has a negative effect on these mangoes. That's not really all that surprising. Um, they do seem to be very stagnated and not growing too well. So let's jump over to the container plantings and see how those are doing. These are planted on the east side of my home, so they are in shade completely from around 1130 on. So I'm using a one to one to one ratio of peat moss, decomposed granite, and perlite. I find that's a really good mixture. The decomposed granite retains water a little bit better than sand. If you use sand, you water a little bit more often. Um, the weight of the decomposed granite keeps that perlite from rising up and falling out of the pot. And the peat moss has that soft, light texture to it, but also retains moisture really well. So the majority of these seedlings were purchased at around a month old from seed, and they've been in the pot for nine months. So they're approximately 10 months old. In general, these have about doubled in size. Just take a look here. This is the Philippine, about 10 inches tall. Here I've got the uh, Pina Colada. It's around 12 inches tall. Here I have a Lemon Zest, 20 inches tall. A 
coconut cream, about 16 inches tall. Namdak Mai, hasn't grown as much as the others, 13 inches tall. The Cac, also about 13 inches tall. This plant is in a seven gallon. It's actually one that I just got last week. It looks a little rough just because, you know, coming from Florida and it being in a wet season, it has some of that black spot fungal issue on it. I did spray it with the copper fungicide, so uh, that should clear up just fine. But this is a larger plant. This was a one gallon that it shipped in. So this is 30 inches tall. Here I've got a Floragon, about 20 inches tall. This one grew a lot. Sweet Tart. Also about 20 inches tall. Put on a lot of growth. Here we have a Cotton Candy. It's actually got two plants growing. I didn't want to yank the other one off, so I'm just letting that grow right now. The one that's on the bottom there. You can see some nice new foliage coming in. That one's sitting about 17 inches high. And this is a brand new addition. I just got this today. This is a sugarloaf mango. It's grafted. It came from Lara Farms in Florida. I bought this uh, sugarloaf because I hear it's one of the best tasting mangoes. And this is a monoembryonic type. So really the only way to get this plant is to get a grafted plant. Here I've got a Kyo Saboy mango at 32 inches high. It's also in a seven gallon. This was a larger plant. This came as a one gallon. And my biggest here is the Sinclair. And this one I thought was polyembryonic, but it's actually a monoembryonic variety. So this is a seedling of okrung. Okrung is polyembryonic. But this offspring is mono. It's put on a ton of growth and is at 36 inches high. This one is in a 15 gallon pot. I've got one mango coming here. This is a Cat Hoa Lok, um, Vietnamese variety, somewhat rare. That one's going to be a one gallon plant that I'm putting into a five gallon bucket. So clearly the mangoes in container culture are doing fantastic and it might end up that this is just the way that I grow the mangoes is in containers you know all the way up to 15 or 20 gallon containers and have to just prune them both on the top foliage and also root prune them to keep them a manageable size. There are lots of advantages of having container plants uh, mobility being that number one thing. You know, if I ever move, I don't lose my plants. And in the winter, if I ever need to bring them in, it's not unreasonable to be able to bring that pot in the garage. And in a future video, I'm actually going to do the unboxing of the Cat Hoa Loke from the eBay seller that I've gotten most of my mangoes from. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and if you do have questions let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them.